Hi, a couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Welcome back. So, today we're gonna paint some minis from the D&D board game Temple of Elemental Evil. Awesome way of getting a shit ton of minis. Get it if you want it. So, the ones I'm gonna be painting are these bugbears. There are actually three of them. So, like I usually do, I painted these out uh, or primed them with grey. Uh, I find that grey is an awesome in-between color because it actually will make you your colors pop. And on top of that, I did my old Xenophil priming. So, base coat wise, I wanted these three exactly same sort of miniatures to look ever so slightly different. So I took an orangey, warm orangey color and I took some brown and I sort of mixed them together to get that um, uh, brownish tone. Now, as you can see in this, uh, I also <laughs> have my phone there with some nice reference photos from the monster manual. Uh, and like always, slob this on, uh, do a thin uh, or thinned out layer so that uh, you know the, wa the, the, the water makes the color flow. Now that was my sort of first color and now I decided to make, uh, I think it, this one is the brighter one, if I remember correctly. So I'm gonna sort of try to do them in three tones so that it gets, you know, they get slightly recognized, but at least we can say sort of, oh, do you mean the bright one? Do you mean the dark one? Something like that. Something to sort of set them apart because like I said, the minis have identical clothing, identical weapons. So here you can see two of them side by side, uh, still drying. And then I went for, I think, the, the darkest one, which contained obviously the most sort of, of the brown color, which was uh, towards sort of brown red-ish. Um, so again, thin out your paints, make sure, especially when you're doing Xenophil, because acrylic mini paints are translucent. And here we go, and honestly, I didn't really feel like that did the job, so I took half a drop or something and I mixed it into uh, the brown because I wanted them like I said to look different so this episode is a lot about sort of uh, uh, a lot of failures a lot of learnings but I think here is when I start to see sort of a clear sort of difference uh, between them so once all of them had dried, I decided to do, uh, for once, a dry brush all over the place. Now, very important with dry brush, remove the wet palette if you have one and, uh, you know, take out uh, some uh, tissue papers, just uh, normal papers, and then you slob on some paint and then you dry it off. And the theory here is that you try to sort of hit only the edges. Now, this is... I'm going kind of apeshit with the first one because this is much more of a brown, uh, sort of reddish color. So it's no big deal if I sort of do an overbrush as it's called. But that's the first one I went with for all three. And then I am a little bit more careful with this uh, much more warm yellowy sort of thing. Rarely do I want to dry brush with pure white, by the way. Pure white, it doesn't almost exist in nature, so that's why I try to only use it when I mix colors, almost. But that's the result, and for me at least, I can see a clear difference between the three. And that difference will get even greater later on. So at this point, I wanted to sort of just paint all of the... Uh, wooden details of their, what's that called, club, mace, yeah, and uh, sorry about the excellent camera work. Um, and at this point, I think I'm, I'm really considering sort of their armor. At first I thought it was actually sort of metal, so I thought I was going to be painting out the metal, but then it turned out, no, it's black leather, because what is more hard rock than black leather and bugbears are black, you know, they're very metal. 
Now to give some sort of contrast to that, they had sort of a, some sort of a, I don't even know what to call that, a decorative cloth running down in between their legs. I made that red because I wanted some pop. Uh, now, of course, the leather won't really look like leather with just pure black, so I dry brushed that with some, uh, some grey, uh, and I did here an overbrush, because I wanted the leather to sort of have some variations and not just be dark. And at this point, I think I'm doing some dry brushing on, uh, on the actual club. Uh, and there are some metal bits on the club, but I haven't gotten to paint those yet. Um, one tip I can give you, and I'm not sure if this is sort of good or not, but dry brushing really is bad for brushes. I use, uh, what is it called, wet napkins, because they contain alcohol, to sort of rub out the color. Now, for the weapons, uh, I went with Army Painter's Rough Iron, uh, because I wanted... I mean, these are not sophisticated warriors, it's very, very simple weapons. I think if when I'm going to use these uh, bugbears, they're probably going to be sort of foot soldiers or something like that. So I painted out everything on the club with that rough iron. Now at this point, um, I think I'm getting a little bit bold and I'm, I'm thinking about doing some highlights on that red piece of cloth. So color I choose often to mix is off-white, not pure white. It just gives everything a little bit more believable tone for some reason. And then I'm going to use some of the Citadel Lead Belcher, 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 whatever it's called, to sort of highlight uh, the spikes that are coming out from the club, but also the shit ton of different sort of... Uh, what you call that studs, I guess, that they have in the lever uh, all over the place. Yeah, that's me hitting with uh, the spikes with that lead better. And I think this color is kind of good for generic metal because it, it's not sort of pure metal. Oh yeah, and here, as I usually do, I missed that they had a second sort of uh, shoulder pad, so I quickly painted it out black, did the dry brushing and so on and so forth. Once all of this has dried, I decided to go with uh, some uh, different washes as well. So the brightest one I did with the sepia color, uh, and that's approximately the result. It's still wet, so we're gonna have to let that dry. Now, the middle one, uh, that one I, uh, I chose Agrax Earthshade. So as you're sort of probably picking up now, I'm actually darkening the shade uh, for each and every one of these sort of, uh, so the darker the the fur, I guess, the darker the, 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 sh the wash, essentially. Um, just to sort of accentuate that difference between them. Here we go. That's the middle bugbear. And then for the final bugbear, I of course went with Citadel's Null Oil, which is pretty much a black uh, wash. Now, uh, one more detail uh, with the null oil. I actually decided at this point to uh, sort of use it for all of the leather details as well. So I went back quickly and just sort of did that on the on the rest of the two uh, because I had at that point only sort of washed uh, the fur. But here you can see the the difference between them, and I'm, I have to say I'm somewhat happy. Now, for that red cloth, uh, someone in the comments, please tell me what that's called. Uh, I don't know. I took some red tone from Army Painter, just to sort of uh, make the colors, the highlights, and, and the sort of base color, uh, you know, jive a little bit more. That was a quick job, and uh, just sort of putting it on, letting it dry. Here's a little quick uh, look see how it looks and then uh, among the final things uh, I of course painted the bases with uh, just pure black uh, a little bit trickier around the legs but usually or around the feet but usually it's it's nice it's fine now I had this army painter brush it's called the psycho 
I've never seen or used a brush that was this small. And for some reason, I decided I'm gonna do eyes. I'm gonna do yellow eyes with some black details. Let's just say you only saw one attempt. It took approximately 54 attempts and I'm not sure that the result was good, but here's uh, the twirl. I'm fairly happy with these guys. Uh, I like that I used uh, these menus. And let's go for some glamour shots. Right, so three bugbears down. Remember guys and gals out there, please subscribe, like, comment or share these videos if you like them. Take care.